Okay, so now we're going to name ternary ionic compounds. So we're still talking ionic, um, and I think the easiest way to do that in, in these problems and not make that mistake is remember ionic consists of two halves. You have the positive half, which is first, and then you have the negative half, uh, which is second. So when you're writing ternary formulas, it's no longer binary. Remember, binary meant only two different elements. Now we're going to have three, and you can actually have more than three sometimes when you're doing these, even though ternary does mean three. So a ternary compound consists of three different elements, um, all in that ionic substance. But again, consider that it has still only two halves, the positive half um, and the negative half. And it's possible that maybe the positive half has two elements and the negative has one, uh, but most often the positive has one um, and the negative has two. And that happens... Um, because you have something called a polyatomic ion. But it's basically done the same way. Just treat the compound as a combination of a positive and a negative ion. Uh, and as I said, you're going to be using now something called a polyatomic ion, meaning there's a many atoms um, in this ion. And I, you're going to have a list uh, of polyatomic ions. Look something like this, or you can go look it up. Uh, there's only, plus, only one positive one ion that we use primarily, and that's ammonium, NH4 with a plus. Anywhere you see a plus or a minus, that just, just leave out the one. Uh, so we have acetate and bromate and chlorate, um, things like permanganate, iodate, uh, under the minus one, and then you have minus two like carbonate and uh, silicate and tartrate and sulfate and sulfite. Um, and then there's some minus threes uh, listed down here also. So uh, what we do then is we use parentheses whenever we have more than one polyatomic ion. If you only have one polyatomic ion, it's not correct to leave the parentheses there. Uh, and I'll get to that as we get to the examples here. So first one, so it's the same two rules. First you write the formula for the positive and the charge. Then you write the formula for the negative and the charge. If the charges are already balanced, you have the formula. If the charges aren't balanced, you cross them down. All right, um, so sodium is Na with a plus one charge. So now we need carbonate. So we go to our polyatomic ion list. Um, and right here is listed carbonate, um, right here. And carbonate is CO3 with a minus 2 charge. So CO3 with a minus 2 charge. Remember what I said about halves. There's the positive half, and there's the negative half. So if we have more than one carbonate, we're going to use parentheses to show that. But there is not going to be parentheses in this because we're crossing down the charges. They're not the same. So this gets a 1, that gets a 2, and so the correct formula is Na2CO3. Na2CO3, two sodiums, only one carbonate. All right, the next one, we have aluminum phosphate. Now, how did I know this one wasn't binary and it wasn't just carbide, it wasn't just phosphide? Notice the changing in the endings. When we did binary, they ended in ide. Now, there are a few polyatomic ions that do end in ide, um, but you're not going to find that element on the periodic table, something like cyanide. There is no cyan something on the periodic table. So cyanide, though it sounds binary, is actually a polyatomic ion. All right, aluminum phosphate. Aluminum is Al plus 3. So again, we need our polyatomic ion list. Phosphate, here's phosphate right down here. Um, phosphate is PO4 with a minus 3 charge. So PO4 with a minus three charge, remember half and half, positive and negative. Charges are already balanced. And so this is just AlPO4. What happens when we do have to cross down? Well, we'll get to that in a second. Actually, not these either. Um, Li with a plus one, lithium, nitrate. Again, I know it's not binary, it's ATE ending. There's nitrate. Uh, nitrate is NO3 with a minus one charge. NO3 minus 1, plus 1 minus 1, once again, already balanced, done. Ammonium. Ammonium is that positive polyatomic ion that I was referring to before. Ammonium is NH4 with a plus 1 charge. So NH4 with a plus 1. Iodate, again, not iodide. So iodate uh, is right here under the minus 1 group. And it's IO3 with a minus 1. So IO3 minus 1, plus 1, minus 1. Once again, so we just write it out. Look at all the atoms there. We call that a ternary compound, although there's four different elements there. Um, all right, so now we get to this one. So magnesium is a plus 2, chlorate, 
chlorate is uh, ClO3 with a minus one charge on our polyatomic ion list. So ClO3 with a minus one. So now we have a case where we're going to cross the charges, but we have to put a two down here with the uh, polyatomic ion. And so the way I express that is I put parentheses around it to show that I have two of the negative ions. So I have two chlorates. Next one, manganese 4, so Mn with a plus 4, arsen 8, not arsenide, um, arsenate is down here, All right, ASO4 with a minus 3, ASO4 with a minus 3, so we're crossing a 3 that way and a 4 that way, Mn gets a 3, ASO4 gets a 4. Now the way we would read this is Mn3, ASO4, parentheses 4. So that's when we, uh, this one up here would be Mg, ClO3, parentheses 2. So if I were to read those out to somebody, uh, that's the proper way to do that. We do with Roman numerals the same way. Fe is a plus 2 in this case. Carbonate, we look on our uh, polyatomic ion list. CO3 with a minus 2, and the charges are already balanced. If I did cross them down, you can see I would reduced to that same formula. Uh, lead, Pb plus 2, thiosulfate. Again, 8 tells us, we look on our polyatomic ion list, thiosulfate is S2O3 minus 2. So we have plus 2 minus 2 again, so Pb S2O3 for lead 2 thiosulfate. All right, ammonium sulfate, NH4 with a plus 1. SO4 with a minus 2, so the 2 goes that way, the 1 goes that way. Well, that is a polyatomic ion, so I have to show that I have two ammoniums. If I forget the parentheses, I would get something like that, which, you know, doesn't make any sense. You don't know where the 2 goes. Does it go to the hydrogen? Is it 42 hydrogens? Um, you have to have a polyatomic ion around that. Notice this is not a polyatomic ion. It's oxide. That's oxygen. So we have ammonium with a plus one, oxygen with a minus two. Now I did include that because this is the polyatomic ion this time. And so when we cross it down, the two goes there, one there, we don't write ones, but the two does need a parentheses. Mg plus two, SiO3, minus two for silicate, uh, again from our polyatomic ion list, and we get Mg SiO3, magnesium silicate. So there it is, naming ternary ionic substances. Again, just treat it as a positive half and a negative half. Remember the parentheses when you're crossing something other than a 1. If there's a 1 outside of it, it's not acceptable. It's the wrong um, convention to leave the parentheses there when you do not need it.